greetings and salutations, apostles for white well-being, the hope, the last hope of Western kind, from yours truly, the Blue Ninja. September 13th, Tuesday. I'm now uh, in Council Bluffs, Iowa, which is just on the Nebraska border. And earlier today I was in Omaha, Nebraska. And that's gonna be the subject of part of what I'm gonna talk about here. Um, all my warmest and best love and greetings, best appreciation, support, admiration, and respect to each and everybody out there. I'm just gonna leave it short like that for now get into some of this other stuff got a bunch of stuff that just stacked up real quick this is going to be talking about some new stuff and um, I'll give a special greeting to reptile my brother um, and the reptile family the reptile wife and uh, all the reptile family um, because he let me know he's gonna he's gonna be catching up on some of my videos and uh, always appreciate your support very much and very dearly brother and right back to you the wife and all of yours um, and uh, anyway sometimes this is gonna be just talking about news stories um, sometimes folks as happens to a lot of us probably, you just open up the news online or whatever, and it's just so much anti-whiteism, rapid fire, uh, some of them really jaw-dropping, that it merits some discussion, for sure. Um, it's just unbelievable. And this is one of those days I'm like, whoa. Uh, just one after the other after the other. So, first of all, you know, one story, caught my attention then another story and then another one that I noticed a week or two ago so I'm going to talk about three main stories here one a little older and two newer and uh, all of these keep in mind are um, all of these are indicators and confirmation of two things so remember this as a lot of us probably know and more people need to know uh, is that all these stories what explains all of them of course is anti-whiteism the reason for all of the things all of the events in all of these stories I'm about to talk about is anti-whiteism that is the reason all of this stuff happened. Um, that explains it all. Anti-whiteism. Um, and we all know the deal with that, I'm sure. That's the message we need to keep getting out. Because a lot of people, especially whites, uh, feeling screwed over these days, and we absolutely are massively screwed over these days but a lot of whites would look at stories like this just like a lot of stories in the news and say that doesn't make any sense what the heck this is bull crap what is going on here especially whites are going to say this is unfair this is just bs and they just can't seem to figure it out well it is bs for sure and it is horrible um and it's just ridiculous um but uh, what explains it all to bring an understanding to it and get rid of that cognitive dissonance is anti-whiteism. Anti-whiteism is the driving force behind all of this stuff. It's what explains all of this stuff. It's the reasoning behind all of this stuff, as we all know. So keep that in mind. Every single story I'm about to discuss will be very obvious. Obviously anti-white to all of us. Um, every single story, every occurrence, in every story, every every event, every little aspect of every one of these stories through and through is anti-white. Anti-whiteism explains everything about all of these stories. 
So we all know this, keep that in mind. That's what we need to be saying to people. Oh, look at that story, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it is ridiculous, it's anti-white. That's what's going on there. Just so you know, that explains it. It's bad, it needs to be stopped. But at least to share the understanding of what's what's going on there because it does seem very befuddling <laughs> um, in many ways but anti-whiteism absolutely um, explains all of it and is the driving force behind all this stuff so that's the first thing number one anti-whiteism explains everything here that I'm about to talk about and most things we're seeing happen in the mainstream world um, number two this is confirmation, these kind of very extreme, I mean, these are these are really just like, whoa, <laughs> they're going to that lengths now. I mean, they're, they're really chopping heads, you know, almost literally for not being anti-white enough. Even anti-whites heads are rolling, it seems like. Even people that are bowing to the anti-white narrative, their heads are rolling. They're not bowing enough. You know, they're not doing a good enough job bowing down enough to the anti-white narrative for the anti-white's liking. They're not, they're anti-white, but they're not super extremely psychotically anti-white. And that's what the anti-whites in power want now. They're going absolute full throttle on everything. Just pull out all the stops, pedal to the metal on everything. Um, it's like Tim Murdoch says, the narrative, the anti-white narrative is shattered. It's very fractured and almost shattered, uh, like resonance on a glass. It is, it is, it is irre irreparable. And it's just, it's a process. It's taking time to really continue to, you know, undo the anti-white narrative. Uh, but most people know there's something wrong and they're really not buying into the mainstream narrative anymore, which is the anti-white narrative. And that's what we need to help people understand, the mainstream narrative. Yes, it's bold crap and all that. It's anti-white. It's an anti-white narrative. Um, so this whole thing is fractured and... Uh, the anti-whites know that, just like Tim Murdoch talks about, the great white rabbit, Euro rabbit. He talks about this. He says, when, he, when I, that video I showed about uh, him talking about resonance, uh, he, he, uh, the anti-whites, um, as Tim Murdoch says, they know the narrative is shattered. They know the anti-white narrative has been um, damaged beyond repair, fractured beyond repair, like breaking a glass you know, maybe the whole glass is not broken, but half of it is, you still can't use it. It's, 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 it's far enough gone that it's completely beyond repair and it's just gonna keep crumbling. It's just, it's gonna take some time, but it's inevitable. That process has started, it's irreversible at this point. It's good for us, but still the time in the process is a dangerous time because the anti-whites see that, oh, things are starting to crumble, but that's a big, long way down and a big tower that takes time to crumble so they're seeing it but in the meantime while that whole building is slowly coming down that anti-white narrative massive skyscraper we could say just coming down one little brick at a time uh they're like tim murdoch says they're trying to do enough uh, as much damage as they can uh on the way out and they know it's on the way out it's such a massive thing that is taking time to, to go out and and to have uh, something to replace it, which is of course where we come in, white positivity, a white positive narrative, going free, white well-being, etc., which is just truth and, and just restoring goodness in general. But in that time, uh, unfortunately it takes time and they still do have a lot of power and, and like Tim Murdoch says, they're trying to do as much damage as they can while the anti-white narrative is slowly crumbling. So they are, they're just saying, oh my gosh, they see that that process started, that 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 cornerstone uh, of the building or that the key foundational base support has been removed or whatever, cracked, and they see that, oh, it's all gonna come down now. It's gonna take some time, but it's all coming down, completely beyond repair. 
they see that and they say, okay, well, in this time, let's just go ahead and hit the full throttle. Might as well. Just anti-whiteism to the max. That's why it's so ridiculously out in the open because they're just they're just saying screw it you know enough people know about it enough people can see through they don't even care anymore just just push full throttle um, and try to maximize the damage this is that's the danger of it obviously so that's what's going on that's an indicator when they're when they're when they're making things this ridiculously anti-white and don't seem to care how ridiculous it looks uh, they know that enough people know that they're just like fine everybody knows or enough people know who cares and they're just like trying to get away uh, you know after they've been caught red-handed kind of thing um, and so so you know they're like running for the exit with the goods in their hands that they just stole we caught them and they, they know the gig is up and they're just running for it and we're just like wait a minute anti-white <laughs> not so fast uh, so that's I think kind of what's going on um, and so ultimately it is an indicator that um, that the anti-white narrative has fallen it is it is doomed to fall completely fractured and nearly shattered damaged beyond repair that's why they're pushing so so ridiculous with this kind of stuff as we'll see so that's good because they know their defeat is inevitable. They know their demise is um, just around the corner. Um, so that's the plus side of this. Um, is they, they, they know the anti-white narrative is coming to a close. They also know that white positivity is on the rise. And therefore a force of good to restore some order. Um, so that's the plus side. We just got to try to reduce the amount of damage from here to there, like Tim Murdoch says. Uh, and I also just just opened up as I was opening up some of these stories. Saw the great Jason Kuna, Mr. No White Guilt himself. He's doing a stream. Looks like right now about uh, he titled it "Anti White Thugs," which is exactly what they are. Anti White Thugs going around and literally hunting. Westmen, white people of the West. Um, and I, I saw a story that I mentioned the other day on, um, or that I got from the Telegram channel called War on Whites, where some guy in Memphis apparently, I think it was a dark non white, I assume, non white of some variety, he was going around literally shooting and probably murdering some whites and uh, filming it and the live streaming it and stuff. And, uh, and it was allowed to be on there, apparently. The anti-whites control all that social media. So these... Uh, so, after seeing that, and now seeing the great Mr. Kuna making a show about anti-white thugs going around literally hunting uh, Westmen. Literally hunting people of the West. It reminds me of that story in Memphis. Uh, they're, they're really carte blanche. They really feel like... They're feeling it, folks. They're feeling like all these non-whites, everyone who's benefited off the anti-white narrative, which is a ton of people, uh, the worst of them are going out and saying, hey, it's open season. It's, it's really South Africa. Um, and they're going out literally hunting white people uh, here in the West and injuring them, killing them. Who knows? God only knows what. Um, God forbid. Um literally hunting us now folks with guns weapons etc um pretty bad it is very south africa and obviously that's just horrible that's um and so that made me think the only thing that i can think of to do is get your shield on folks get your shield on this is my shield no white guilt this is the best thing that i think i can come up with that a lot of us can do is to defend us, get your shield on. Um, obviously it's not gonna do much against a bullet, but um, don't worry about that too much. Uh, just do what we can. The safest, most effective things that we can do is put a shield on like this, folks. It's battle time, this is the armor we need. Um, 
and any other means that we can get away with. Um, but this is always a rock solid start. Um, so that's what I thought of when I just saw that story. It's going to be a video, a no white guilt video for sure. Got to arm up, right? This is literally armor um, that everyone should be wearing, in my opinion. Um, this is this is absolute defense. It's one of the reasons I wear it. It's it's actual. It's, it's it defends you um, as a white person um, in the dangerous anti-white times that we live in. Um, and then. Uh, So pretty crazy there um, that it's gotten to this point um, and without further ado I'll mention some of these stories here folks um, and uh, I'll start out with one uh, the first one I read that um, reminded me almost exactly of a story that I talked about from about 2014 or so. Um, the NBA. Um, I'm reading a story about the owner of the Phoenix Suns, Robert Sarver. He also owns the Phoenix Mercury, the, the, the women's um, NBA team in Phoenix. Um, this guy is a white man. like a absolute man of the West um, Phoenix Suns owner Robert Sarver suspended fine ten million dollars after investigation finds conduct clearly violated quote workplace standards well read something like that you know where it's probably gonna lead it's gonna be something anti-white it's gonna be he didn't follow the anti-white narrative well enough sure enough it goes into it. The NBA announced the punishment Tuesday saying the invest today, saying the investigation found that during his time with the Suns and Mercury, Sarver used the N-word at least five times when when quote recounting the statements of others. So <laughs> he wasn't even saying it, it sounds like most of the time. He was just recounting the statements of others. You know, that sounds like he was just quoting others. Uh, probably and they're still going to nail them on that uh, and then it goes on there were also instances of quote inequitable conduct toward female employees that was the other big one uh, you know sex related comments sexual harassment toward females inappropriate comments on men and women blah 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 employees in the organization of the team that he owns, supposedly. So there's allegations of quote racism, quote misogyny. Um, so it's about uh, the RACISM stuff and it's about uh, women. Now, it, the story goes on, but ultimately that's what it's about. This guy apparently used the N-word a few times um, and uh, probably just quoting others. Doesn't matter. Doesn't even matter if the matter if these allegations are, are true or not. They're going to make the allegations and then supposedly stuff he said about women. It could have been just one little, hey, nice uh, rose pin you're wearing today, Mrs. So-and-so. Oh my gosh, I feel sexually harassed. Who knows? It could have been the smallest, tiniest thing. We don't know, but uh, it doesn't matter. Um, that, that's essentially what the article is talking about. This is RACISM and this stuff that's supposedly happening uh, that har harass these women or whatever. Um, so it's protecting women. It's protecting non-whites, uh, especially darks here. Um, but the article goes on and on. But he goes ridiculously on and on about, oh, he used the N-word a few times. When did he use the N-word? Was it this day or that day? I mean, just nailing him. 
obviously non-whites can say the n-word all they want nobody cares so the, again the, the reason that this so he gets fined 10 million dollars uh, he's suspended for however long um, one year and I read the rules he can't go to any games he can't go to any practices no events no nothing no business related things with the Suns organization or the Merc Mercury or Mercury organization in Phoenix nothing he's the owner of this team supposedly and the NBA as anti-white as they are comes in with more power and says nope Mr. Owner, you're the owner of this team, but the NBA, the anti-white NBA says, um, no, you, you can't go to any of your own team's games, etc., for a year, and you got to pay $10 million. The maximum fine. Um, so, why did all of this happen? This happened. This guy is being punished for one reason and one reason alone, because he's white. That's all only reason that this is all happening is it because he did this or that said this word or that word or some slurs or against non-whites or women or did offensive this or that happened or not is it because any of that no it's not because of any of that whether he did it or not the anti-whites don't really care if the guy is saying those things or not it's not the reason they're cut they're putting the hammer down on him they're putting the hammer down on him and making these excuses about it, which is all they are, for one reason and one reason alone. Because he is he was born white. That is the reason, the only reason, that all of this is happening to Robert Sarver. Guaranteed. 